Okay, so I'm Patricia Jolity, I'm a professor at ESSEC. Actually, my topic is not really a cashless society, but I work more on corporate governance, but I'm interested in the topic, so I will try to, to well, to give some messages from, uh, from the studies which have been done on the topic. Thank you, Patricia. Hugo. Good afternoon. Uh, Hugo Frey Jensen, a member of the Board of Governors of the Danish Central Bank. Among my been there for 30 years. Among my responsibilities uh, has, have been uh, payment systems, note printing, and uh, the process, especially what has been interesting to me, is how to improve the payment system infrastructure so it's, it's ready for a digital world. And that's what I've been giving a lot of thoughts and taking some action on in the most recent years. And Nicholas? Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Niklas Arvidsson. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, I've been doing research on innovation and change in the payment system for about eight or nine years now and, and written reports on the cashless society and also doing other uh, research projects on, on innovation in this field. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, my name is Etienne Boileau, and I manage a uh, series of funds that are large investors in crowd lending. And um, we have also made uh, about 20 equity investments around the world in crowd lending platforms. Um, so maybe I'll start with, uh, with you, Hugo, if, if possible, and, and just talk about um, uh, where you see things going in terms of a, of a cashless society. Cash has been around for a you know, uh, centuries, um, millennium. Um, are we? Uh, are, is this? Is the next millennium going to see the the, the cash disappear? Well, I I think I would say we. I don't see a cashless society around the corner. I probably see a society with less cash. And I think, in that sense, that cash has been around for 28 centuries, as you mentioned. And whatever cost comparison you do in comparison to other payment instruments. Cash is expensive. So from the broader perspective that you want uh, to increase productivity in society, you also want to use less resources on payments. So I think how to change the infrastructure, how to make uh, the public at large more interested in a digital society and digital solutions. I think that's, that's the most important thing, not so much the cashless society, but let's say the digital society. How do we move the population at large in that direction? Um, now, Nicholas, you've uh, done a lot of work, and, and obviously Sweden and, and the Scandinavian countries are probably the most advanced in terms of um, the move in this direction. What's your, what's your view on, on how quickly we're going to get there, and what are the, what are the issues that, you, that, that the Scandinavian countries have faced uh, with the move towards cashless? I, I agree with Hugo first to say that uh, a 100% cashless society uh, will take time, because that you need a lot of legal changes, changing the central bank law, etc. Uh, but what we're moving towards in Sweden now, and actually quite rapidly, is a cash-free society. Where cash plays such a marginal role that it really doesn't uh, have any major effect for, for the economy as a whole. There are still people that are depending on using cash and some merchants that, that sell uh, via cash. But what has happened, and this is a long story going back to the 70s with bank accounts, 90s, with the card payments infrastructure, 2007-8, with unions taking action to reduce the use of cash in public transportation, for instance, for, from a safety reason. And, uh, of course, now uh, cash substitution uh, services uh, in Sweden, it's called Swish, the big one, that sort of works, uh, there are others in Denmark, uh, works like cash, but it's electronic. Uh, one paradoxical thing also is we are introducing new bills and coins in Sweden uh, right now, and that has actually uh, reduced use of cash. Uh, um, actors have taken decisions to, to avoid cash before that uh, process uh, was started. So, um, uh, Patricia, from, from, a, from a governance perspective, and perhaps taking, taking a more societal view, um, have you thought... Can we talk a little bit about what the impact might be on uh, different, different stratas of society and, and whether uh, this move is uh, part of an elite? Is this, is this, you know, are we creating more problems 
uh, by moving away from cash for um, certain segments of the population? Well, so there are different uh, questions. Uh, so there is one question about different segments of the population and maybe uh, people who are disadvantaged or, um, or countries which are disadvantaged maybe. So um, what to answer this question is not so, so easy. Um, I think if you, when I thought of the, of the problem, I thought, okay, what is the benefit and, and cost of uh, moving from uh, cash to other means of payment? Is uh, First, you have the accessibility to the other means of payment. Is it accessible compared with cash? And what is the cost of using them compared with cash? And I thought probably um, for the if you think of people you meet in the streets and for the poorest people, um, maybe it will create problems. Maybe you will have uh, answers to that, but I, I th thought maybe it can create problems um, because with the people who are isolated from the from banking system who don't have an account, quite a lot of people don't have an account, um, then it's probably more difficult to, to use other ways of payment. And if you think of the burglar in the streets, it's very simple. It's easy to give cash. Uh, what can you give? Uh, food. So probably there will be some kind of substitute for a barter, I would say, in, in some cases. Uh, but it's, so in some cases, it will may be at a disadvantage. Uh, globally, I think it will be uh, beneficial, I, I think, but because also there are studies about that. So maybe, uh, I don't know if I can continue on that or just uh, come back to it later on. Or, yeah. yeah. Hugo, I know, I know you want to talk about some numbers uh, yeah, but from I, Denmark. I, yeah, I think, I think what, what has happened, if we look at, at, at the average citizen, it's quite clear they voluntarily have, have chosen not to use cash. I mean, in, in the Danish society, we think, cash in transactions in retail, the transactions account for less than 20% of all transactions, uh, whereas it was 80% 25 years ago. And I, I also think that, that what lies at, at, at the bottom of, of, of this transformation is that the population at, lar at large now thinks it's very convenient to use the digital instruments. How to spread that to the entire society? I mean, there are vulnerable groups, groups who have difficulty with doing the trans transformation, as you mentioned. But I think at the EU level, a lot of things have been done. Now we have this with everybody has, should have access to a, to a payment account at the EU level. So we sort of get accustomed to that you have a bank account and it's open for all to carry out transactions. You, we have mobile devices that are very good substitutes for cash. Uh, but I think what, what, li what lies at the heart of it is that, that you must, and that's a long process, persuade the population at large that this is very convenient. And, and at least in the Scandinavian countries, we're now in a stage where everybody demands digital solutions. You can't get very far without a digital solution. People will start complaining, why isn't it digital? And that's, but that's been a long way. Yeah. Uh I'm, I'm just reminded of a, of a uh, I was recently parking my car somewhere in uh, New York State and uh, I went to the parking meter to put in my 25 cents and there was no slot for the, for the 25 cents and I, all I had to do was swipe my credit card and I thought, wow, this is great. Uh, it just, just makes life a lot easier. Yeah, when, uh, I agree. I mean, there are people in society that that will face problems if cash disappear. At the same time, uh, we, we had a when we had this project called the Cashless Society. We said that okay, when people in the street, people begging, when then when they accept other things than cash, then then we're really very close. And that you see in Stockholm today. You have homeless people selling magazines, and you can pay with your card, uh, or you can pay with a mobile payment um, service called Swish. Uh, or a card payment, traditional card payment with a mobile uh, POS terminal. So it, it is happening. And, and what's going to happen to, uh, you know, if you're, if you're sitting in, in, in the Board of Governors of the Central Bank, how do you manage the process of uh, fewer notes in circulation? How do you manage fraud? Uh, d does that make life more complicated or does it make life more easy for the Board of Governors? Well, I, I think uh, that uh, 
the, 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 the real challenges with, 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 with the digital solution is, of course, security, cybercrime, how to ensure that it, it's, it's efficient and safe. Uh, and that's very, that's very important. Uh, but I think all the security measures you build around cash makes it quite clear that cash is also very expensive <laughs> and very, very, very hard, hard to handle. So I think from, from, from the central bank's perspective, of course, we, we by, by law, is, is our mandate to produce whatever notes and, and coins, the demand, whatever the demand there is. But uh, we would still like to transform society into a more productive way. So we are, we are trying to, I mean, we have, we, have, we, have, we have been promoting very much to have a very digital and a uh, very safe and very broad infrastructure in Denmark so you can, you can, uh, you can produce, let's say, instant payments in two to three seconds <laughs> if you use the mobile device or your mobile phone. Within two to three seconds, the money is in the opponent's account. Uh, and and th I think this is where, where our efforts have, have been in, in recent years to, to get, a, let's say, a digital highway. <laughs> well, I mean, we all, we all know the example of M-Pesa in Africa, right? Um, uh, which is a, a, a obviously a, a real example of how a society can move forward and sort of leapfrog the, the traditional banking stage. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction to, of course, I mentioned about the very extreme, but uh, of course, on, on average, it's uh, quite beneficial, and studies have shown that it's beneficial uh, to estimate the benefits of moving from a cash to less cash. Or, okay, these studies have, have uh, looked at the impact on consumers, banks, well, the value creation for consumers, banks, um, uh, merchants and also the government and the, and the globally there is there is a gain it's obvious and the only fact that people move from cash to other means of payment reveals that they prefer this so it's, it's really a relation that is a better way to pay on average so globally the estimated this benefit is uh, is positive but uh, again the share is not exactly uh, the be most beneficial our consumers, in fact, and uh, in, the, in the study that I saw, the, the merchants okay, also benefit, but less because of, of the pricing. So I think probably in the future, uh, what would be quite important, I guess, is, is a, maybe competition will increase in the sector, and I guess that pricing will be maybe more beneficial to, to merchants. So I expect that it will be even better in the future. Yeah, go ahead, Nicholas. Yeah, I think that's really important and that we do not end up in a situation where some big global players take the whole market. So we need the fintech to, to really challenge the old players in, in this market. Um, so uh, I, I've been dying to ask uh, about negative interest rates, even though it's not really on the topic, but I'm sure people are interested <laughs> since we have a member of a central bank here. Can you... Can you Give us two minutes on, on what the impact of negative interest rates have been uh, in your country and uh, how that links into this, to what we're talking about. Okay, sure. Uh, we've had a negative interest rate for quite a while. And I think now it's minus 65 basis points. It has been lower. It was minus 75 basis points. Uh, so what we are sure of is that minus 0.75 basis point is not the zero lower bound. Uh, we have not seen, due to the very low interest rate, we have not seen an increase in the demand for notes uh, due to negative interest rates. Uh, what, uh, but, but it is also constructed in a way our monetary policy instruments that uh, for the man in the street and his bank account, banks do not charge negative interest rates, and there are some incentives in our monetary policy instruments, whereas big companies, money market funds, money market participants actually pay negative interest rates, and that's what is crucial for our foreign ex fixed exchange rate policy. But we, so uh, uh, nobody, nobody sees negative interest rates on their wage account with, with, with their bank. Uh, uh, but and, and you haven't noted, there hasn't been, as we're talking about cash, there's no, people aren't putting cash in their mattresses. No, I mean, if you, if you look into how expensive it is to store cash and what kind of insurance policy you need to take out to store it, and uh, uh, I think it's still a safer bet to have your money in a bank account. <laughs> uh, um, and what about, let, let me ask it a little bit about um, 
uh, where, where your studies, where is Scandinavia in terms of the road to the cashless society? What, how, where are we? Uh, are we? Are we sort of halfway there or a quarter of the way there? And, and what's, what's left to do? Well, the, the Scandinavian countries have come, come the furthest, as, as we know. But um, what, what we've seen in Sweden now is that the, pay, the reduction of the use of cash is increasing. So we're going from a very low level with the quicker speeds towards this cash-free society. Uh, so it seems, in, I have been talking about the tipping point, uh, where, where the value of cash is, is reduced because fewer merchants accept it, accept it, fewer consumers use it, so there's no interoperability, if you like, uh, in the cash system. And, and we seem to be in that situation now. I think Denmark, you can say more about that, is in, in a similar situation. Um, does that have any impact on? Um, does that have an impact on uh, inflation or on GDP growth? Are there any sort of secondary impacts that we can measure, or is it too early to tell? I'll give that to you. Well, well, I don't, I don't think this has much impact on GDP growth. Uh, apart from the, the very that there's as many other productivity increases that increases brings a contribution to prosperity. If you, I mean, our estimate says that in, in Denmark we use the costs of making payments at, at the level of society. We did, the, the, it was a study we did in 2009, showed that we spent 1% of GDP uh, on making payments, including the time consumed in getting a cash and sold other effects, etc. And if we can reduce the costs of making payments, that would of course be beneficial to society, but I don't think it will bring us into a different growth pattern. Uh, but but what, one thing I would like to add is that I think, I think the digital strategy that where, 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 where the public sector and the banking sector has a clear strategy to, to, to develop digital solutions. Everybody has a bank account, uh, digital land registry we have in Denmark. In Denmark, nowadays, you don't receive paper mail from the public authorities. You get it by email into a specialized account. Uh, we have, a, we have the, the security system for the banking system as well as a, addressing your, your, your local municipality, the, 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 the card you use. That's the same that's common across the nation. So this whole digital strategy, I think, will bring huge savings to society. Yeah. That, uh, well, of course, a lot of, the, a lot of the fintech companies that are either here or have been financed by venture people here are, are all about uh, creating additional efficiencies in the, in the financial supply chain, reducing accounts receivable time, reducing accounts payable time, converting invoices, um, lending where banks are not going to lend because it's not efficient. Um, and so so it all, it's all going in that, in that same direction of greater efficiency. Uh, do you, uh, what, what are you seeing in terms of innovative, innovation, startups that are sort of working in, in your sector? Um, do, do you keep an eye on those? Uh, there are several in Sweden that have come quite far. Uh, Swish is one example. That's actually a bank-led solution, which is interesting also that banks can be innovative, even though we tend to see them as old um, uh, old uh, firms. Uh, but then we have a lot of, I mean, I settle is there, uh, Klarna has done a lot, so I think they're quite big here in, in France too. Uh, seamless, uh, not perhaps that successful. And there's a lot of uh, providers of, of payment, service, uh, payment services beneath this, uh, to the banks and to the, so there's, there's a lot of player in this field actually. Uh, and also a lot of capital from other industries that have been uh, sold off um, in Stockholm. And, and what's the regulatory uh, approach from your in Denmark to this to, to the new new companies? Uh, I think that uh, the, the Danish FSA uh, try to help whenever they can, but uh, and we also have some lighter regulation for for that follows the EU regulation for, for, for if you're not a fully licensed bank, but you just, just have payment services. So that's, that, that's one way. I think the other way is to ensure that you have a vibrant society around the digital solutions, not necessarily fintech, but all uh, complete digital, uh, uh, digital uh, hub. Uh, I think, think that, is, uh, that is important. 
And uh, then I also think well, what, what, what one interesting change I, th I think I've seen in recent years is, is four or five years ago, banks tended to be a bit hostile towards the fintech and saw them as competitors. But nowadays, they want to cooperate with the fintech. They have seen we have to bring a lot of the fintech on board rather than seeing them as competitors. So that's, I think that has been a clearly change in pattern.